Today I'm going to be coppicing and pollarding some trees. Um, very similar technique in most respects. Um, in this particular instance, this is going to be uh, coppice today. So I'm going to top chop it off pretty much at ground level and it will regenerate from there. Instead of it killing the tree, the tree will come back. The reason I'm doing so is we've noticed previously that the new shoots from the bottom of the elder come out and they're really beautiful, rich, dark, glossy green leaves in, you know, in the summer. Whereas the growth from the top of it is starting to yellow and look a bit old. Bottom line, elder isn't a particularly long lived tree. Uh, this is kind of approaching the end of its life. Um, it's not a particularly long lived tree. It's not a particularly long lasting uh, wood either. So it won't last too long. So what we're going to do by taking it off at the base and coppicing it is it'll regenerate with a load more shoots and it completely resets the age of the tree. Effectively, it's, you know, reborn and it gets a whole new life. What we can do at that point is we can select for a single stem that we want to bring forward into another trunk and bring that up. Uh, but probably we'll just let it function as a, you know, it turns into a pretty significant shrub if you let it do it. And that's really our priority because behind me is north, that's where we get the cold winter winds. And the uh, uh, the house is just at that side of camera. So we want to blunt as much of them as possible. This is start of a, a new approach to um, uh, managing the front garden that we started in, like five years ago when we moved in. Uh, this is a part of it to give a different way of um, managing it. So that's coppice, that's right at ground level. This is a sycamore. It's, uh, it's not a native tree, it's almost considered an invasive. Uh, it's a weed tree, you know, they grow really fast, they grow very readily and they're almost considered native at this point, but they're strictly speaking not. Uh, we're again, not going to kill it. Now you can see previously where I've taken it off at this height same as the elder actually the reason that they were topped off is this is a bit close to the house for big trees there were some that were even closer and we just had to kill them it was disappointing because especially on a site where we're trying to establish trees we planted thousands of them uh it's disappointing when you got to come in and actually take out established trees but they were far too close to the house foundation they were going to start causing problems and they just had to go this being a bit further away um, we just need to manage it in a different way so I took it off at that height previously because it's pretty much grown back. What I'm aiming for today is to take it off at this height. We're not going to take it off at ground level. We don't need to reset the clock for this. Um, we're quite happy with the age of the tree. But you can see the, all these group growing points, all the growing shoots, especially at the tops here, that have come on since this was done, I think it was four and a half, five-ish years ago. Uh, so all of this is all new growth and it's significant. We're probably um, come through, so yeah, right. So uh, pollarding it is just effectively the same as coppicing, but at a higher level just to make management easier. It was done traditionally to bring them up above grazing height for livestock. So you could have tree systems that were productive growing, you know, firewood and things like that on big, huge uh, trees that had existed for centuries, uh, gave huge amounts of firewood. But as well as firewood, because all the growth was higher up, um, they could graze livestock underneath. So it was like a, a form of agroforestry. Here, we're gonna manage it just to keep it under control so it doesn't get too big and threaten the house. But also because you can see that when it's topped, it's pollarded, which has effectively already happened once when I topped it off at this height, the new growth is lots of, you know, long, thin shoots. And that's exactly the sort of fuel we need for running the rocket mass heater in the house. So this is sycamore lends itself very well to coppicing on pollarding. Not all tree species do, but most do. The other one I'm doing is this ash tree. Exactly the same thing as the sycamore. So again, it's going to be taken off at this height so that I can come through in subsequent years and I don't need to come in with a saw. I can come through with loppers and I can control it every couple of years. It'll keep the tree under control. It'll give us lots of new, fresh growth all the time. Um, and, you know, it's growth relatively low down as well We're exactly where we need it for blocking them winds from coming in and into the front of the house um yeah it's gonna it's gonna make a big difference um but more importantly it'll also give us a certain amount of firewood ash has a certain amount of wildlife value the keys are eaten by quite a few bird species um and of course ash is under threat at the moment with the uh, ash dieback so yeah i don't want to take an ash out unnecessarily and this is the thing none of these practices are damaging to the tree. The tree's co-evolved 
to be able to do this so they could survive being browsed by megafauna, which would have been, you know, things like mastodons and mammoths and rhino, you know, yeah, woolly rhino, you know. They evolved to do this. This is their trick. This is what they do. There's no megafauna anymore. We're the megafauna. And by managing trees in this way, you can keep... These are just, you know, weed species that we're managing closer to the house. We can do the same thing with productive trees. And you can keep trees productive for hundreds, if not thousands of years. There are chestnut trees, for example, that have been producing harvestable, edible nuts for thousands of years. I mean, you know, older than the... New Testament of the Bible, you know, old stuff, right? And they've been producing nuts consistently all that time. This is a way of actually extending the life of trees, not damaging them. It looks pretty brutal, but this is what they evolved to do. This is, you know, their big advantage, evolutionary advantage, and it's just, it's working in symbiosis with what trees evolved to do. We are the megafauna now. Right, so I'm going to start with the elder and I'll do a bit more filming as we go along. And that's the elder down. And you can see here, right at the center, that started to rot out. Also, on that section there, and that section there. So really, it had, it had reached the end of its life. Um, as I say, these trees don't live very long. Um, whereas now, it'll get a chance to regenerate. And you can see, here we go, all the way down here. So there, there's a little red growing spot, and there's another one there so yeah there's loads of growing shoots all over the whole stump that'll regenerate really aggressively this year um because you can see where the growing points are and this will put on easily six feet of growth this year alone um it's going to be a really brand new aggressive growing tree because there's a huge amount of energy still retained in the stump now the material that we've removed isn't going to be wasted but i'll do another video on that one this is specifically about the coppicing now in terms of pollarding on the sycamore now once we get down towards this v point here the branching point if I start trying to cut lower down into here, first off, I'm using a bow saw. You know, I'm doing it by hand. I haven't got a chainsaw. I'm trying to come down through here. I could. I've done it before, but it's very slow going. It's very difficult. It doesn't achieve me a great deal. This here is much more easily cut and leave a really nice stump that isn't going to cause problems, you know, for the tree later on. Because that's another thing, of course, when you're cutting a tree like this, you need to leave a good stump that's not going to do the tree any harm and give it a chance to recover afterwards. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to remove all the side branches to make it completely even all around. So I'll use loppers and take off all the small stuff. Then I'll come through with a bow saw and take off these side branches, including these sections up here. So that's uh, that's easily dropped with the bow saw and it'll take a huge amount of the weight off so that when I come in and I take it off here, I'm dealing with a lot less weight and I can leave a much nicer stump without worrying so much about the bark tearing too much or you know leaving a really raggedy stump. Another way to go would be to cut it a couple of inches above and then come in and do a finish cut. But using a bow saw, that's a huge amount of work. I'm somebody gonna make one cut each and then I'm going to do one here, and then I'm going to do a second one here, and that'll be it for this. That'll bring it up to about, I don't know, three and a half feet maybe. So everything that's going to grow from this point will be from this point lower down. It's easily handled with uh, loppers moving forward. I don't need to come in here with a saw ever again. I can just come in and just easy maintenance with, uh, with the loppers, and it's uh, easy to deal with. And of course, I've also got the growth higher up, where it's above the wall, which is exactly where I want it to get, you know, a huge amount of shelter effect. So that's the next cut. I'll uh, get to work on this tree. So you can see the difference that that's made. That was about 40 minutes maybe with a bow saw. And you can see the nicely sloping cuts, the water will run off. There's no splitting, there's no tearing of the bark. So I get a chance to recover. And you can see even here, even between them, there's a shoot already beginning. And yeah, these ones here, they'll come as well. And even lower down, all of these cut points, they'll regenerate. And this will be a huge pom-pom of growth this year. And then it'll put on more over the next few years. And perhaps every three years, maybe, we'll come through and we'll either, either thin it or we'll pollard it again. But we'll only bring it back to this. So every year, 
this will remain the same. This will end up getting you know swollen up at the end, full of all sorts of gnarled, interesting um, uh, growth. And then it will put on new and new and new shoots every year. And then eventually we can come through if we want to and we can take it slightly lower. And we can machine the really interesting growth that we got on the top here and make fine furniture with it and so on. But we probably wouldn't. We just leave it as a, a system function because this is going to be a huge amount of uh, weather protection coming in from the north in winter. So, yeah, looks drastic, is drastic, but the tree will benefit from it and it'll uh, protect the house and it'll, uh, it'll grow back before you know it. All right, next one will be the ash tree. So this one, I'm going to take slightly differently. So I'm going to take the side branches off and take it back. And I think I'm probably going to take it at this kind of level because if you look at this back one here, I don't really be coming down into this material. It's really thick. It's already starting to become quite knotted up. So that's good. So we'll take all of these branches off and then we'll take it off at this level. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that, I think. That way, of course, I'm not going to start fouling the wall with the saw as well. So it's uh, it's relatively small cuts to make. So this shouldn't take too long. But uh, yeah, I'll come back and film after I'm done. So that's the ash cut back as well. So that's all of them done. This is the next day. The weather's gone, so it's a bit windier. Um, this at this point will be its final shape, same as the um, the sycamore tree. So it'll just continue to be cut back to this shape year after year, so we won't have to come through with a saw ever again. And by using the coppicing technique that we did first off on the elder, that basically will regenerate a tree that was literally in the process of dying into being something that's a thriving, living um, ecosystem supporting bush again. Uh, and then we could form that into a tree if we wanted to. And then uh, the sycamore and the ash, these trees, if we just let them go at this point, would be big enough that we'd have to take them out permanently because they'd be risking the house. At this point, because of the way that we've managed them and reduced their height over time, rather than just taking them all at once, um, they at this point become an actual resource both for us and for the wildlife because at the point that we have to come in and manage them rather than it being an inconvenience it's something that gives us a yield of fuel that we can use in the house and hardwood um, sticks the sort that you get from coppice and uh, pollard systems uh, really long um, thin shoots that are perfect for going into mass heaters and the other technology that we've got going in over the next year or so because we've got a, uh, a rocket uh, oven going into the house and we've got a rocket water heater system going in up the field for uh, customer showers so we're going to need a lot of fuel more and more of this sort of thing is really useful to us it's more or less the management system that we're going to be running for most of the shelter belt species over time this is just a little forerunner of that because obviously these trees are much further along but uh, yeah really really useful management technique for you know our sort of context <laughs>